He-Man and Teenage Ninja 2. <laughs> oh, nuts. Pedro Dilusia. What? That's awful. I wrote that? Uh, that still doesn't make any sense. There might be to be some editing on this episode. Uh, apologies. Santa no, and the are rattling things. Always editing. Hey, hey! It's Patrick Coyle, artist in progress. And I suck at getting constructive feedback. As creative people, we all need feedback so we know what we're doing right and what we need to work on. So today, I'm talking to my friend Shannon Eric Denton, a professional writer, artist, and producer who's worked in comics, animation, TV, and film for over 20 years. Shannon and I talk about how to get feedback from professionals on your work, how to know if you're getting good feedback, and what to do if you have a bad interaction with someone that you've asked for feedback from. Oh, let's go. Shannon Eric Denton has done it all as a creative professional. In comics, he's drawn everything from Spawn to Star Wars to Deadpool to Superman. He's worked as an artist on the Fox Kids series X-Men, Spider-Man, Captain America, The Avengers, and Silver Surfer. Other animated shows he's worked on include Teen Titans, He-Man, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He's written for Cartoon Network, Hasbro, Saban, Disney's Marvel Entertainment, and Warner Brothers, among others. He was an editor at Wildstorm, which was Jim Lee's imprint at DC Comics. He's worked in live action on shows like Con Man, Las Vegas, Ally McBeal, and the United States of Tara. In the games industry, he worked on games like God of War and Neopets. He taught at Los Angeles-based Associates in Art, and lectured at CalArts, Art Center College of Design, the Art Institute, and Collins College. And he and I founded one of the first online comic publishers called Comic Works back in the year 2000, which also had a spin-off company that published illustrated novels for young readers. Man, that is a <coughs> sheep ton of stuff. And that's not even all of it. But all that experience coming up in comics and animation as a young artist, working on creative teams for all his projects, and eventually mentoring other artists makes Shannon the perfect person to discuss getting feedback. Shannon Eric Denton, my longtime <laughs> friend and collaborator and sometime business partner. Uh, we're not currently in business together, but we have been for many, many years. In fact, you and I started one of the first online comic book publishing companies back in 2000. Yeah. Yeah. It was so. called Comic Works. Um, and we had uh, a lot of free comics on there, but we also then had a partnership with Stan Lee for a little bit. Yeah, wasn't we, that, that was exciting. It was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah, like, all of a yeah. sudden, like it just blew up and we had this little subscription thing. We had a lot of really talented folks. Um, I think we were a little ahead of the curve though. A little ahead of the curve. I mean, AOL, we also partnered with them on a lot of this stuff too. I mean, it That's was, right. you know, and Sony, Sony yep. PlayStation. That's so, right. I mean, That's right. Yeah, I mean, there was some really cool stuff we were doing, but I think it was a little ahead of the rest. You know, the the the, the technology wasn't there yet for the rest of the country. So that's right. Um, you know, yep. but still, still publishing, just just not 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 the same way as we had in the past. That's right. Yeah, as a, um, I should mention, as an offshoot from Comic Works, not only did we do online publishing, but we also did a series of Comic Works anthologies where we had mm -hmm. a lot of uh, comic people animation people, people work in film, just do their own short stories. And we put out those anthologies. Uh, I think we did five of them. Yeah. And then we also started a line uh, called Actionopolis, which were illustrated novels. Uh, and though I am no longer part of that, uh, you have continued on with that and published, I, don't, I can't even count how many books. I think we're over 40 now. So yeah. Are you really? Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. We did a lot of really cool stuff. It was, it's fun. I mean, the, 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 you know, and that's kind of what we're going to get into here with when we talk about the actual, um, you know, nuts and bolts of these things, which was one of our Comic Works anthologies. Hey, look, I see what I'd you're like doing. to say I planned that, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> I'll just, I'll take it though. I know how Hollywood works. You just you grab, grab it when it's there. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's uh, those partnerships. It was the getting to work with so many talented people. And I think a lot of that came out of just, you know, you reaching out and just saying hi. And yeah. And then we hit it off and then that led to, you know, us making stuff together. That's and right. I think that all aspects of entertainment, whether it's toys, video games, all the different things that I've done and, and you, you as well, it's, it's, it's making things together, you know, not making things by myself. That's right. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, you, me, Rob, um, there's been a variety of other people. Um, for the, I said Rob, like everybody knows who we're talking about. Oh, uh, of course, Rob. You know Rob. Yeah. Uh, Rob, Rob Worley is a very talented writer. Eisner nominated Scratch Nine. Oh, of course, he, of course. Yeah, I did the yeah, logo I mean, for so, that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> which, you know, Rob set up as a feature also in the past. And that's uh, right. you know, I mean, so everybody that we worked with, whether they were somebody that was a friend of ours that were creative that we knew, and we're like, this person's talented, but may, maybe they're, 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 uh, 
you know, we're all at different popularity levels in our careers at different times right. in our careers. Right. Um, but every single person that we got to work with, uh, you know, I, I feel blessed that we had those relationships. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, literally everybody in the industry, <laughs> uh, which is, well, I, as I found out after we started this business together. Um, but we worked with um, people that I never thought we were. Dwayne McDuffie wrote a story yeah. in one of our books. Yeah. Keith Giffen uh, mm -hmm. did a lot of projects uh, with you in particular. You guys yeah. co-wrote a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah he's um, my writing partner for, for a few years. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, a, bunch of, so a bunch of fantastically talented. I'm not trying to leave anybody out because we Just literally- Just do that part where, where, where we'll, we'll pause right here and open your mouth and then you can just drop in the list of all the names <laughs> and it'll be an audio file we'll drop in later because yeah, it, it is a big list it is and every time i i go over it i'm like i can't i forgot that we got to work with this person we're lucky enough yeah you know, yeah you know. i mean yeah all the people okay. on the actionopolis list to comic works i mean it was it was it was pretty good times i mean and stan was. you know and stan you know byron price who right. was a champion of ours for a long time and he was know, um, um you know unfortunately byron passed away but um, you know, Byron, Byron's connections led to more connections. So that was, that was kind of the, the fun of it was like, well, you don't know this person I should introduce you. And so I right. felt like we were constantly getting to meet new people and, you know, going to Comic-Con and, you know, setting up the booth, That's right. you know, gave us a nice, a nice point, um, uh, uh, you know, sort of a base for people to come over and say hi and get to meet other people. You and I did San Diego Comic-Con as well as other conventions, but mostly San Diego for about 10 years straight. Yeah. And I saw you field uh, a lot of requests for feedback on people's portfolios because people uh, would see what our project was, what you had worked on um, and come up and ask for, we get kids of all, well, people of all ages, honestly, yeah. um, who will come up and ask you for advice. And you were really good because I know you've been an art director. Uh, you've been, you've had to lead teams both in animation and as an editor and uh, you're good at giving good constructive feedback. And so for today's topic, I wanted to talk to you about that, about how can I, as a, as a developing artist, go out and get feedback and how do I know it's any good and what do I do with that? So um, I've seen you very artfully uh, <laughs> and very kindly uh, give feedback to people who were receptive to it and people who weren't too receptive to it. How should someone uh, go about getting feedback? Like we just talked about going to a convention, that's one way. Um, is that the best way or? There's, I mean, there's so many routes now that weren't around at the start of my career. I mean, just the, the internet's exploded to where you've got people, you know, sharing whether they're peers, you know, uh, either, either peers who are in the same uh, situation as yourself where, you know, you're, you're not quite ready for prime time. And then you've got access to, you know, everybody that's working as well uh, via social media and everything now. Um, um, cons are still great. I still think there's, you know, there's, there's really something good about, you know, showing somebody your work and developing that relationship with them. Um, you know, in, in, in a, you know, in the professional sense that you, you know, you establish, uh, uh, you know, contact with them. And then, you know, instead of looking at it, like, I'm going to get a job today, which good for you if that happens, it's happened to a lot of people I know, but the reality is more likely that you're going to show them your work and then make them remember you you know, by being pleasant and charming and, you know, showing your work and then what really, and then coming around and, and, and showing them again at some other convention or at a, you know, if they've established, you know, uh, an opening for you to send them stuff via email. And I know I didn't get hired originally because I, I blew everybody away with my talent. I, I got hired because I blew everybody away with how hard I'd been working because, you know, the first convention, it's like, you're not ready. Second convention, you're not ready. You know, several years into it, then they're like, they could start seeing that I was, I was really taking this very seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, I, was, I wasn't giving up. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't quitting. And I think a lot of times when people say that you're willing to do the work, because to be honest, that's, that's a huge part of, you know, this is, it's a job, it's work. So if they're, if they're like, all right, this person's putting in the time and they're not getting paid and they're getting that much better on their own, it's easier for them to go, okay, now imagine how much better they'd get if we brought them in here and gave them some training. Sure, so. sure. Well, that makes sense. And you, I think you mentioned something that's really important is the soft skills, right? So it's not just that they're seeing how your work is, but also how hard you work. And then there's the personality bit around it, which is you are receptive to feedback and you are easy to talk to and personable and things like that. How important would you say that is overall in the, in the, in the, in the approach? I think it's 
hugely important. I mean, it's not it's not a, a you know a deal breaker by any means, but it definitely you know going back to the whole establishing a relationship with somebody. Um, you know, if somebody says, "Hey, I want your advice," and you're like, "Do you really want my advice?" And they're like, "No, I do really." And you're like, "Do you really want my advice?" And you give them a couple of uh, up outs, and then you give them the advice, and they argue with you on all the advice. Um, it's it's a lot harder at that point to then go, "Well, <laughs> I you know this person doesn't want the advice. They want to hear that they're great." Um, there's a line behind them. I'm right. going to tell them just, you're doing great. Keep on. And, you know, c- you know, come back, come back later. And they're going to go away and be like, ah, oh, that guy didn't know what he was doing. He didn't hire me on the spot. Um, and I think it's important, you know, on both sides, I think it's important for the person looking at the portfolio to have empathy. I think standing in those insane, you know, sometimes eight to nine hour lines at Comic-Con in the early days when I did to show a portfolio, um, and sometimes you get to the front of the line and that person's gone for the day, you know, and you're like, I just, I just, I just gave up the whole day <laughs> waiting this line that, that used to happen. And, uh, you know, so I have empathy for the people in the line. Um, and then on the flip side, I think going into it, you have to really be, have that honest conversation with yourself. Do you really want the advice? Do you really want to do this as a career? Or do you want to hear that you are, an artist and you're having fun and that, you know, your stuff looks good and that, you know, just, you know, you, you just want an attaboy because that's totally legit too. I don't think everybody is cut out for this career. Sure. Um, I've had a lot of friends that are not in this career anymore and they're off doing something else very successfully. And they just realized that the, the career part of it wasn't for them, not the art, but the career part. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, it's sometimes, you know, you know, that, that all changes too. And depending on your situation or where you're at in your life, you know, you know, you know, what decade it is, what's going on with the industry. Right. You know, I don't think there's a, a one path for everybody and everybody gets on it. Um, certainly not the case uh, with the studios anymore. You know, sure. there's, there's, it's definitely more of a, a you know, a gig economy. Mm-hmm. Um, even when you're on a production, you're on that production. Very rarely are you on as a artist for the studio. When, whereas when I started, they brought you on, you know, they were making an investment in you, which was great because you got a little bit of, you know, when you weren't really ready for something, you had, you, you had people that had your back to kind of help train you up and get you ready for the next thing. And now I think it's definitely more, uh, you know, in the studio's favor, at least they think it is, um, that, you know, oh, we can just pull from everybody, but they, they don't have the kind of loyalty that they used to have either. So there's the flip side of it on their side of things. Um, they don't have, uh, um, they don't have access to a team. They have access to individuals. Okay. And that makes sense. So, you know, as a, as a, as a leader, as someone who's, you know, supervised, you know, in video games and TV and film, um, you know, I like having a team, you know, sure. and, you know I know uh, you and I both uh, are some of the few artists that actually like sports. So, you know, sometimes I'll drop in the sports metaphors, but uh, I definitely right. think that there's something to be said for having a group of people that are bringing each other's level up and elevating the people around them you know, Absolutely. That, that team effort then a whole bunch of individuals that you have to as a leader really navigate it requires a lot more leadership skill i think mm-hmm. um trying to get a bunch of individuals to perform together as a team sure sure, so. sure. totally now you talked about um you know going to conventions and and seeking out feedback from uh comic book artists what if you you know you mentioned a couple other fields so what if you work in animation or if you work in film um, where might one go to get feedback from those types of, uh, of artists? I think the great thing about so many of the, the TV film video game companies right now is they've got, you know, they've got LinkedIn pages, they've got their websites. They want to hire really good people. So they're pretty transparent about what they're looking for. They have recruiters that are out there that you can chat with and develop relationships with. Um, you can send your stuff. You may not get, it may not be getting looked at by the person you want it to be. Um, but that studio has picked that person you're sending it to for a reason, because they're trying to sort through the people that are ready to step into work, uh, on day one Mm -hmm. from the people that are needing some more time to develop their skills. Um, and, uh, you know, so there's, there's, you know, and, and, you know, maybe a barrier to access, but there's way more people trying to give you access. There's way more outlets for that access. Okay. Um, and once again, social media, you know, if you know who did what particular part, um, 
friend of mine, um, uh, you know, was, was looking for work. Uh, this is several years back. And he just started, to, you know, there was a show he liked and he just started reaching out to the creators on the show. And being like, I like what you do. And, you know, they developed a relationship, you know, an online friendship. Mm -hmm. And eventually they, they were like, they noticed this person. They're like, hey, you're, you're an artist. We just noticed, you know, we just thought you were our number one fan, but you know, your stuff's really good. Have you ever worked in TV? You know, and so it, they basically reached out and provided an opportunity for this person to break into something that they wanted to do that they kind of thought wasn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. And it was this honest relationship and this honest friendship that developed. That's really cool. That, that led to them going, all right, well, we like you, you know, and that's a huge part of working in a, on a team and in a studio environment is, are you the kind of person that everybody around you is going to want to have to sit next to you for the next year? Sure. Um, and so, Unfortunately, that part doesn't get talked about in the trade schools as much as it should. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I guess lecture at a lot of the universities and I try to make sure that the kids know that who you are matters as much as what you put down on, you know, in, in your computer or on the paper. Um, so, you know, I think, I think being, being a, a teammate is, is huge because it is a very high stress, fast paced field that we're in. Sure. Um, and the more people you can surround you with that bring the stress levels down versus adding to the stress, uh, really, you know, adds a lot. Sure. No, that makes perfect sense. There was, I've also noticed, you know, being on not a ton, like I don't do deviant art or some of those other ones, but like even on Instagram, if you've got some relatively famous animators or comic book artists and I see other people reach out and say, Hey, would you mind taking a look at my work? And the person generally speaking, um, I haven't seen any that have been super negative, but either they, either they don't reply because they, I'm sure they get tons of messages. Yeah. So beware of that, right? You you may not get a reply, yeah. or they might you might you're probably more likely to get a polite no thank you or I don't I'm sorry I don't have time I would love to but I can't. Uh, at least I've, I've seen that quite a few times from some some people that I follow. Um, but it doesn't hurt to reach out because eventually you know it's a, it's a numbers game. Yeah, if you ask enough people. Yeah. Yeah, eventually you get somebody who's between jobs or, you know, just loves doing that. There's actually a site. Are you familiar with Pencil Jack at all? Yeah. So yes. um, Paul Smith is on there mm -hmm. and he will give advice to anybody and everybody who posts on there. Um, I don't know what he's doing right now. I mean, he's certainly not working for the major um, uh, comic publishers anymore. Um, I don't know if he's doing storyboard work or illustration work for, for as his day job, but he'll take anybody's piece and he'll then pencil over it and yeah. he'll go no 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 here's what you want to do you got you got to look at your look at your figure you want a little more dynamicism in here your anatomy's off this guy should be six heads not seven heads um that, that kind of stuff and it's amazing like so you'll never know unless you actually become a part of one of these communities like what kind of uh feedback you can get yeah and it's it's you know going back to what you were saying about the uh you know maybe not getting a comment i mean a lot of us are so busy with work and we know we need to social media so we're not quite on there looking as much as we're like all right we need to put stuff out there and so you know a lot of times it's not even that you're uh uh you know it's, it has anything to do with you you know a lot of times i think we intern when we're trying to break in we're trying to internalize like oh my stuff's not good enough or oh they're not commenting and it just maybe they don't have time for it and so it's like i got right. five minutes i'm on there i'm posting a sketch i'm back off of facebook because right. you know you know uh you know when you're when you're in this as your career you have to remember that you know people a lot of times, and not everybody, but you know, you, you have a spouse or maybe you've got kids, maybe you've got obligations, maybe it's just your, your dog or your cat you gotta take care of. Maybe it's just you, you're like, I worked so hard all day long, I'm gonna go murder everything on Xbox for the next, <laughs> you know, two hours. And that's, you know, that's their, right. <laughs> that's their outlet. But, you know, and those are all valid. Everybody's got their own story. So it's, it's really important not to re remember as, a, as an artist trying to break in, not to try and come up with, <laughs> you know, all these other variations to the story, just really focus on your story. Yeah. You know, what you can do reaching out, putting your stuff out there, as Patrick said. Um, and even if that person doesn't comment more than likely, there's some other professional that that's friends and follows their buddy and they may see your stuff. And if your stuff's amazing, they may reach out yeah. and open up a contact for you that, that wasn't there previously, if you hadn't put yourself out there, because you know, I mean, it's, sure. that, that's what we're all doing. If you're trying to break in, you're putting yourself out there saying, please look at me, please notice my work, please hire me, mm -hmm. please let me get to that. I go into work every day and I'm, I'm trying to please the studios or the networks. And, you know, I'm like, hey, please look at this and approve it so I can go home tonight on time so I can move on to the next thing. You know, we're, we're all 
a little bit chasing an approval. Sometimes it's it's work, and sometimes it's trying to get the work. But sure, you know, we everybody can relate to that. You know, there's an empathy for there for that. Absolutely, it's not always the time for it. Right. No, I think those are all really really good points that people should keep in mind. How do you know? Just kind of moving on to a slightly yeah. different flavor of this topic. How can you tell if you're getting good constructive feedback as opposed to maybe something that's not going to be all that helpful? Um, not that every, I mean, sports metaphors again, you know, not every, you know, not every NBA player goes off and becomes the greatest NBA coach just because they know how to do the sport. You know, sometimes it's, you know, the guy, you know, coaching the football team or whatever, you know, you're pretty sure that person could not and never did have the ability to run a 50 yard dash, you know, <laughs> but, um, you know, but they may know the game intimately. And I think that, uh, um, you know, with us in our careers, you know, being being aware of of the fact that somebody's giving you feedback just because they're a professional they may not be good at giving feedback you know mm -hmm. so that's 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 tough when you don't have the experience in, to know that and so what ends right. up happening is the more feedback you get then you can start saying okay like three quarters of the people are giving me the same same feedback mm -hmm. got some weird feedback over here from this person i really admire maybe it's the genius feedback that i've been looking for or maybe they just weren't great at giving feedback because it, it, it goes both ways in that, um, you know, as, as a, you know, as a, as an artist, whether you're breaking in or as a pro, not everybody is good at the, the, the soft skills. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, I think we've all run into someone at a show or uh, an appearance who maybe was having a bad day or, or maybe they are a grump in real life. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and they're just not good at that kind of stuff. Um, you have to kind of slough that off, right? It's, um, oh, that's a great, cause I've, I've run into, um, I've been in situations where people that I'm, that I know are the, the nicest person on the planet. Um, and I ran and stopped a guy once because they had a bad experience with a pro. That pro was, was, had eaten something and didn't know it yet, but they had food poisoning, but they were oh. starting to know it. And oh, they were no. at a convention. And, and the sweats were happening and they were like, I got to get out of here. And so that person had a bad experience with a person that ne on any other day would never have had that experience. And so that person was going to internalize it and think that, you know, oh, this person was, was being you know, dismissive to me. I'm going to go off and tell 20 other people about this person. And it would have been a, it would have been a wrong, a bad story. It sure, would have been sure. based on bad information or a one-time experience. And so that's also too hard to suss when you're the, person that situation but i chased them down and let them know and i'm like this you know i didn't rat out the person they they have food poisoning but i'm like they're having you know they're having a medical issue and uh you should you should definitely come back and have a try try again with this person because you know okay and, and uh you know not every time is a friend standing around though to go chase down somebody to let you know that that's the experience and so right it's really important too to have multiple experiences with people and if it happens over and over then yeah don't be a glutton for punishment and keep getting abused by somebody that's you know um you know it's 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 uh not a good mental place to put yourself in because you do need to hear you do need to hear honest advice mm -hmm. but you don't need to hear you know uh, uh criticism that's personal you know you right. need to hear criticism that's constructive right that's a good point i i also think like i ended up personally getting feedback from folks that i never would have considered uh, reaching out to originally, like oh, we worked with Ernie Cologne when we were at Comic yeah. Works for a while, remember? Yeah. Um, and you know, I knew Ernie's name growing up. He was uh, a mainstay in in comics. He did uh, uh, Damage Control with uh, Dwayne McDuffie yep. at Marvel, and he's done some other great projects. Uh, One of the first people to draw, you know, Richie Rich and Castor that's right. Ghost and, yeah. That's right. He could yeah. draw anything. He gave me the best feedback of some several of the people that I met in that in that period of my life. Uh, he knew so much about storytelling. And about um, like he, it was obvious looking at my work that I, my, my anatomy needed work. So he's like, he's like, well, you know, your anatomy needs work. And I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Thank you. And he's like, yeah, but this right here, this is some good storytelling. I like the facial expressions that you've got here. This tells a good story. Your layouts are good. Like he was very kind. Uh, and also it's what you're talking about. He, I went back to Ernie several times. I'd see him at a couple of shows. He lived in New York, which is not far yeah. from here. I'd see him once a year for a couple of years. Uh, he's since passed, um, but um, and we'd 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 exchange emails. I'd just send him stuff every once in a while, and he was super helpful. So it's nurturing that relationship of somebody 
who you're getting good constructive feedback and can help kind of mold you a little bit. And I think that's something that as you get more experience, you're able to see that there are the superstars in industry and this is all entertainment, you know, directors, there's about five that most people can name. And then there's every other movie that got made by a professional person that really knows their right. skills right and comics is like that video games to some degree are like there are these superstars that they're in the right place at the right time with their talent and timing and mm -hmm. popularity and so they become they become names and we kind of get fascinated by that and sometimes we're not seeing the ernie clones who are the people that are getting hired by everybody and everybody would love to have on their team right and they're going to give great information so it's it's also important too to be aware that there's just an almost infinite amount of resources out there for you that you right. can pull from that maybe aren't the ones you're thinking of, you know? So be open to, you know, as Patrick was pointing out, be open to stuff coming at you that wasn't something you were chasing. You may not see it as part of your right. career path, but it's because you don't have enough experience yet to see the advantages to these, these, you know, outside influences that maybe you weren't aware of going in, but you're going to benefit from. Exactly. You know, one thing I was wondering about is so, you know, you you mentioned earlier, you kind of get feedback from a bunch of people. That way, you know, you can see trends in the feedback, right? So you know yeah. what to listen to and maybe what isn't all that applicable. Yeah. But if you're hearing from people, like for, for instance, for me, I know I need to work on anatomy. And then if you go and you Google, how do I get better at anatomy? It's, it's the same three things people are going to tell you. Oh, <laughs> or draw yeah. from life, draw yeah. a lot, do this, do that. Um, and then also you hear like, look at Loomis or look at, um, I'm looking at my bookshelf to see if I can remember <laughs> people. Um, but like people are like, look at very specific people who taught anatomy. But how do I know, like, you might hear those things. What if they're not gonna work for me, right? Like yeah, I, I think part of it too, is you can be listening to a, a, a video game professional who is entirely top of their field, knows everything about it. And you're trying to break into comics. You can and it's hard once again it's harder to parse this uh younger um there's probably some overall advice within what they're telling you that you can pull from that will be applicable and then some of it that if they've never worked in comics is not going to be applicable at all you know right. i've seen a lot of tv film video game advice where they're like just keep working it till you know and they're and i'm like you don't have that they don't understand that you know six illustrations a day at the minimum you know and you got to move on the next day to the next thing so it's it that's one of the things with comics that's the joy of comics and the pain of comics is you know that it could be better but your your job as a professional is to get it as good as you can and still hit your deadline right and you know other industries have the advantage of of different budgets that allow them to explore exploring is not a thing in comics you know we don't <laughs> rarely get time to go design all the characters and right. scout locations and all that before we have to start drawing the page. You know, we're, right. we're inventing that stuff as we're illustrating, right. um, which is sort of the, the, where the spark and the magic comes from. And that's why so many other fields follow comics or are pulled from comics and inspired by comics. Downside is sometimes you don't get the time to plus the stuff the way you want, but sometimes, you know, sometimes you, you can over plus things. You know, I've seen people redo and redo and redo and redo the same thing over and over again and it, right. it's marginally better but for the amount of money that got spent um between just you know people on a team working on something they could have made three other products in that time sure you know and and you know if there was a a guarantee to success as much money as the studios whether they be video game studios or film studios spend on research and development they would just make a hit every time because they would have the formula down there isn't a formula there's a there's some things you can do to hedge your bets mm -hmm. but even then that goes off the rail sometimes right you know so the, the trick is to find that inner voice that tells you like i'm happy with it and i'm pretty sure this is this is really good and then nice. and then you know if the people around you are people you trust and they're like yeah i feel that way too more than likely that's the right the right path doesn't always work because timing comes into it a lot of times mm -hmm. um you know i mean you look at movies shawshank redemption and you know we're all about to as we head into the holidays watch you know jimmy stewart run around and talk about zuzu's pedals that movie bombed when it came out but right it is a classic that we go back to every so the people working on it were right 
it was the people going into the movie theater at, at that particular time when it was released or the marketing and all that, it was the wrong time, mm-hmm. you know? So that's, a, that's another hard thing to wrap your head around too, is you're <laughs> chasing, getting good at your craft. Like this, this is a team craft. That's right. If, if you're not, if you're not just doing a solo illustration, you know, or, you know, exhibiting in a gallery, comics, film, games, all of it, you know, toy design, it's a team sport. You're working with teams of people and everybody's trying to give their best work and have, you know, come up with something that they all, you know, everybody likes and it's, it's all those, you know, you know, you check all those boxes and, you know, hopefully you got it right. But uh, if you didn't, you move on to the next one. And sometimes right. you're lucky and you find out you did get it right. They just, they got it wrong and you'll find out that you were right later. You know, that happens. <laughs> yeah. Or you get it enough right. Yeah. 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 I, I find that along those lines, like the, the, what ends up on the page or the screen or whatever you want to call it uh, is usually not as good in your mind as you want it, but it's good enough for what the people that you're delivering it to want it. Yeah. Which isn't to say that it's bad. It's just that we always hold ourselves to a higher uh, standard than I think we're what we actually put out. Yeah. Usually. Usually. I yeah. mean, that's, that's where you want to be. You want to, you want to know you can do better. Right. And you know, and then what ends up happening is if you're a professional, you go, okay, well, I could have done better. I should have done that better. So next time in my eight hour day that I'm putting in, I'll have a head start on this kind of a thing because mm-hmm. I figured this out. You know, it's like anytime you try something new, it takes longer than something that's, that's like a, you know, gold standard that you can go to. Sure. Um, you know, I know uh, when Jim Lee and Rob were doing those awesome VHS tapes with, you know, all the other, you know, guys back on the, uh, it was Stan back in, back in the day. Yeah. You know, that was one of the things Jim brought up. He's like, oh, I, you know, this, I can do this panel really well, this pose and everything, because I've already figured it out. You know, and he and Stan were talking about that. And mind you, I've watched those cassette tapes in a long time, but I, <laughs> I remember taking that to heart that, you know, here's this person, you know, him and Rob that we're talking about, like, if it's, if it's something that I've done, you know, I, I, it, it's a lot easier for me than when I'm like, get, get a script and I got to go figure it out. And it made it much more approachable for me because everything was new to me. I, I did right. not have my go-to action poses or my establishing shots that, that worked for me that I figured, because I hadn't figured all that stuff out yet. They were at a point in their career where they'd already figured out like, well, I know this works. And then, and then they were leapfrogging on that, that base knowledge. And so I think as young artists, you're, you're, you're still trying to establish that base knowledge. Sure. You're trying to work out the basics. Totally. This is called Patrick Sucks the Drawing. Um, what, is there an area of your creative game that you feel could be better? Oh, for me, it's, it's endless. Uh, every time I draw something, it's, you know, it's, it's a point of frustration. Yeah, I, I, uh, I think all of us, uh, you know, you watch those people who are like, I'm just going to do a warm up sketch before I get drawing today. And their warm up sketch is better than the end of your yeah. work day. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we, we all feel that, um, you know, I know for, um, for myself, um, it's the things that I haven't drawn before, kind of going back to what we were talking about that, that I, I need to do more of. I, you know, this is something I do when I guest lecture at, you know, Cal Arts or Otis or any of the schools around here, Art Center. Um, you know, I always ask the kids, like, what do you hate drawing? And they all list off all the normal things, hands, you know, girls, you know, whatever it is that's their, their kryptonite. Mm-hmm. And I try and mentally keep track of the whole class. And then I go, all right, you, guy who can't draw girls, you're going to draw girls for the rest of the class. So <laughs> woman that says she hates drawing, you know, hands, you're going you're gonna to concentrate on that for this entire class. Right. All the rest of you that said cars, we're all drawing cars together. You know, <laughs> you know it's, uh, I, I think that if you want to do it professionally, it's real important that you know you're going to be drawing the stuff that you don't like to draw. Right. Yep. The job is not to draw, you know, and I, you know, especially the advice I give like a 12 year old is so different than somebody who's trying to enter the, the job space. If it's, you know, a 12 year old, you want to be encouraging and just say, have fun drawing. You know, it's okay for a 12 year old to have the same two anime characters that they love over and over and over and over again in their portfolio. Cause they're, <laughs> right. they're practicing, they're drawing, they're having sure. fun drawing, they're getting better by practicing. That's, they, they've kind of figured out what a lot of older people haven't figured out, which is like, you should just draw a lot and that's how you get better. Right. But once you're starting to enter the workforce and you're showing your portfolio, that advice that I give is different because especially if you're trying to break into live action and you're like, I want to be a live action storyboard artist. 
but then it's just headshots of the same two anime characters over and over again. That doesn't translate to the field. Right. Um, if somebody said, hey, I, I think live action would be cool. I just started drawing last week and I've been drawing these, these headshots. Well, then I, it's gonna, I'm going to switch gears and it'll be a lot more, you know, more on the encouragement. I think you should always be encouraging. But if somebody's like, I want to get into this craft or this field, and they're at the point where they're very serious about it, but you see them going down a path that's not the right path, then you give them the information and you schedule like, all right, now I want you to go do this and show me later how you've applied that. And then I can actually give you advice that's specific versus, you know, your, 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 your chase, your, 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 your net that you're casting is, is in the wrong pond, which is what right. I think a lot of us do when we're young. Cause we just, we just want to get hired, you know? Mm -hmm. We want somebody to hire us because that'll take some of the stress off and then legitimize it to, you know, parents or whoever, <laughs> yourself, that you're not crazy. Right. That you could be doing this. And that's okay. Be open to those opportunities. If something presents itself and you get hired, we'll take it. But be aware I'm either derailing my life goal or my life goal was just to, to do art and now I'm getting paid for it. So then that's, that's, that's also legitimate. You know, it's, it's, once again, it's all conversations we have to have with ourselves. Right. And if we're lying to ourselves, then we're going to be miserable. If we're, you know, if we're honest with ourselves and you're like, I don't care. I just like, you know, I'm a court reporter now and I've drawn head sketches and having to listen to horrible stories, but I'm getting paid and it's got health benefits and all that. You know, if you're happy, mm -hmm. then you're, then you've won. I mean, I think that's the, the, the main takeaway out of all this is just that, you know, if you're, if you're enjoying the process and not chasing the end goal, then you're winning. Yeah. Fair. It makes perfect sense. Going back to the question you asked earlier, though, that I didn't want to, um, when you're talking about getting advice, that you need to go, okay, I'm, I need to make sure that everybody looking at my, my work and giving me this feedback isn't just the same kind of person giving the feedback, or I'm going to get very, I'm not going to get as good as I could. No, I think it's an excellent point. I mean, you, you, you don't want to just be in your bubble. So if, yeah. you draw, if you're drawing cars, uh, but you're only showing it to people who are mostly into monsters or into cartooning, then they may not be the best people to give you feedback on that yeah um or perspective or like cityscapes or like you have to consider who's giving you the feedback and how uh you should take that yeah you know if you're showing it to people who are all illustrators and they're the best of the best but all of their work is super realistic and you're trying to push your stuff in a more stylized way the feedback you may be getting may be good but it may not be accurate to what you're trying to do and so that's right. it's it's tough well shannon denton Thank you for being here today on Patrick Sucks' Drawing. Well, thanks for having me. It's always good to see you. And uh, if there was advice that you want expanded upon, uh, I'm pretty easy to find. All right. What did you think of that? Did you find any good tips in our conversation that might help you? Do you have any related questions on this topic that maybe we should dive into deeper on a future episode? Have you had any experiences, either good or bad, asking professionals for feedback? Come on, give me a shout down in the comments and let me know what's up. And if you like this video, please consider giving a thumbs up so other people like you can find it. If you'd like more videos like this, slap the old subscribe button down there and click that bell so you'll be notified when my latest videos go live. And as always, remember this. You don't suck. You just think you do. And you're wrong. Keep drawing, writing, knitting, or whatever, suckers. See ya. Peace.